Okay, well, we're gonna do this quick because they just started thundering. So today we're gonna learn how to take your scenery from something boring like this. I mean, it's not that boring, not, you know, Mother Nature, great job. But we're gonna spice it up and turn it into something like this. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, ooh look at all these colors. Mm -hmm. So that's different from your usual, it's raining. Let's do this quick, oh my God. Keep in mind your surroundings. If you're trying to change, let's say, the color of this wood here, you might pick up some of my skin. And now there's ways to work around that when you go to edit, but you wanna avoid that the day of the shoot. So I have Alexa here wearing red and black, and we're only changing the green, and I knew that going into the shoot with the location that she needed to wear, she needed to make sure that she wasn't wearing any green. So say that Alexa was wearing green, right, on this shoot, and I didn't know that, and we just found the location, I would try and look for a spot that didn't have green behind her if I knew I wanted to use this effect. So if she was standing, um, in front of the greenery right here, that would be a problem because uh, I'm gonna pick her up the, and I can't really separate her from the back that easily. But if she were standing here, for example, all right, I like to do a little dance. So right here, it'd be a lot easier to cut her out from the background. It's raining a lot. <laughs> Let's go. God damn it. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm all wet. We're gonna go back inside to the computer. That was uh, kind of a fail. That could have gone a lot smoother. Let's jump into Premiere and I'm gonna show you how to accomplish these looks and I'm gonna show you how to fix some of the issues that I was trying to explain earlier. Also, I dripped water on myself to make it look like I came in from outside. That was shot like two days ago. To, I'm gonna go change before I get sick. All right, let's jump into it, guys. To apply this effect, we can apply it to either the footage itself, but I personally like to use an adjustment layer. So you can do that by clicking inside your project panel here, right clicking, and you're gonna go to new item and adjustment layer, or you can come down here to the new item icon. If you don't see that, just drag out this edge and there it is, boom. So I'm gonna hit that and create an adjustment layer. I'm just gonna hit okay, and there's my adjustment layer. I'm gonna drag that in. Okay, so an adjustment layer. Why do we add this uh, effect to the adjustment layer? It is so that we do not affect the actual original footage down here. So anything we do to the top layer will affect the look of it, but it won't actually you know, mess anything up inside of the actual uh, video itself. The other nice thing about the adjustment layer is that you can stack the HSL because you only get one HSL secondary per Lumetri. So you have to add another Lumetri, and I'm, don't worry about that, I'm gonna show you how to do all that. You're gonna hit the adjustment layer, come up to effect, where are you? There you are, look at that, effects. Now, I'm working out of my effects panel up here. This will look different if you're in color, editing, assembly. If for any reason you don't see this effects or effect control, later on we're gonna be talking about that. If you don't see any of that, just come up to windows and you'll find all of them in here, just check them on. All right, so inside of effect, we're gonna type in Lumetri, or Lumetri, Lumetri, Lumetri. You get it, it's there. Grab it and drag it into your adjustment layer. Let's click on it and come up to effects control. Come down to Lumetri color, HSL secondary. Now we can work out of here or over here on the right where you found the effects earlier, there's Lumetri color. I work out of here most of the time. Drop that down. You got a couple things here. You have three eyedrop icons, one of them with the plus sign, one of them with the minus sign. The first one will be used if you just wanna select a specific color, let's say this green here in the shadow, right? Now to see what you actually selected, you gotta check this box here. As you can see, we got every shade of green that's the same as what I selected over here. In this drop dropdown, uh, I have it set to color slash gray. You have color black, so you can see everything that's in colors with selected, black it's not. If we switch it over to white, it's a lot more detailed like this because you can see if there's anything where you don't want it, like on her skin, for example. I usually start off with the color gray. Now, say you're missing more green, which in this case we are. I'm gonna shut this off before I do this. I'm gonna come to the second one with the plus sign and all that's doing is, hey, I wanna add this green over here. As you can see, I'm missing gr some green over here. So if I uncheck this, select the center one and click this, click that checkbox, and as you can see, it added that green. But from the very beginning, I already know that I need all the green. So I'm gonna reset this to show you how I do it. I'm starting immediately with that first one before I do anything else, and I'm gonna drag it all around the green because I know that I need all this green. And as you can see, I got all the green that I needed. Obviously, I'm missing some branches over here, 
and I got some of the uh, tree trunk, which I don't want. What we're gonna do is we're going to adjust the H, S, and L. What those stand for is uh, your hue, your saturation, and your luminance. As you can see, if I drag the luminance and I spread it out, it begins to include more of that green because it's now dragging it into the darker side of the, the luminance. Come back over to this one to add more colors and I'm gonna drag that over this bush because I can tell that a lot of this bush is not in there. Select this again, and yeah, there we go. We have more of it. Yeah, I'm missing a lot of this tree up here, so I'll click that again and just drag that over. And yeah, we got more of it. So again, take your time with this. I'm showing you this quickly, obviously. Pay attention to detail and try and make it look good. If we focus in this bush over here, we can see that we have some some uh, small gray and this like pixelated square. And as you can see, if I deselect it, there's like some yellows in there. So that's obviously what it's not selecting. But if we look at this one right here, I'm gonna hit that gray. There's no reason why it shouldn't be picking that up. So I'm gonna select this and drag it over the screen here. Select it, and there you go. Now it's there. We're still gonna get this. Another way to fix this is to use your denoise over here, and that's gonna get rid of that those small grays. Um, I don't kick it all the way to the top usually. I just keep it a little bit lower. And the blur is gonna smooth that out so you don't have the, those harsh lines. Don't get too crazy with it, because then it starts looking weird. And um, down here is where you actually go to change the color or you know make it pop more. Again, this is a color correcting, color grading tool, a color correction tool. So this green, if I were to drag this over to the green to make that color pop more, you could do that. You don't have to have this in color gray. We can turn that off. And um, to reset this, you can just double click and it'll reset. Um, let's put it in the pink, for example. That's another thing you can do is just click it wherever you want or drag it for more subtle changes. Um, but for now, let's just keep it in that pink so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. Now you have this over here. This is just to increase the brightness and darkness. If you wanna reset that, also double click. And that goes for everything here. You double click everything after you know, changing it and you, don't, you want it to reset it. You can type it in obviously, but you can just double click. It's a lot faster. And as you can see back here, I'm missing a lot of the green. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that eye drop with the plus and click that and there you go we have a lot more you're gonna run into some issues though where for example over here in the tree trunk we selected too much because obviously it picked up some of the color from the tree trunk in whatever I just clicked in the next example video right after this one I'm gonna show you how to mask this out you can mess around with these up here to try and get rid of some of the color in the tree trunks but a lot of times you're going to run into this issue and it just takes time to really mess around with this or come up here to the eyedropper with the minus and, you know, rub it on the tree. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes it does nothing, as you can clearly see. Um, down here, you got your temperature. If we drag this over, it's going to make it purple. Drag it over here. It's going to really make that pink pop contrast. You can sharpen it, uh, kick up the saturation or gray it out. That's also a cool look. Up here, this icon, if I click that, it's gonna split everything up between shadows, mid-toes, and highlights if you wanna individually manipulate those colors within the highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. And as you can see here, the mid-tones are still selected because I, that's what I did over here. Now, before we move on to masking, say you wanna manipulate two colors. In this case, say the, the red on her shoes and what she has wrapped around her waist. I'm gonna select my adjustment layer I'm gonna come up to effect, lumetric color, type that in, grab it and drag it in. This is one way to do it and now you have two in here. It can get confusing. So you can right click to rename, I'm gonna call that tree, call that shoes. You can go ahead and start adding your red straight from here or you can come back to your lumetric color over here. Now this is something that you have to keep an eye out. You start working on your shoe layer and then you come over here, for example, click that tree and then as you can see in your master adjustment layer, it's still on shoes. So you have to also switch that to tree. So that's why maybe working out of here might be easier for you. Or another option, which is something a lot of people do is they, they'll just work out of two adjustment layers. So they'll bring in another one, rename that one, for example, uh, to shoes and then drop in the lumetri color into this. And just that way you, there's no confusion. If you click this, uh, rename this to trees, 
and now there's no confusion. You can work out of this one, everything you do here, and then come back and do this over here. I'm gonna work out of just one. You can use this as well if you'd like, but we've already been working over here, so let's just stick to that. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I'm gonna grab my eyedrop with the plus. Color gray. It's not too bad, but we got some of her skin. Mess around with these up here, blur it just a tad bit. Now the red is a color that is kind of difficult to change completely. If I click all the way in the green over here, it's not really gonna turn green. Even if I move this all the way over there, it just looks kind of gross. I'll just make that color pop. So I'll bring this into the reds, for example. And if you wanna see the before and after, you come up here and just hit that little uh, FX. So now let's mask. Let's use the example video uh, that I showed earlier with Alexa wearing green. So in here, I'm going to now eye drop with the add and I'm gonna drag it on the green here. I'm gonna see what I have selected. And as you can see, we actually didn't pick up her shirt at all. We have most of the grass, but we're missing a lot of the trees. And if I uncheck that, you can see the trees is very similar. So if I select those trees back there, for example, yeah, so we got her shirt. Um, and we have a lot of the tree trunks once again. Mess around with this however you need to. So we're gonna create a mask and for now, let's make this again pink just so we can actually see what we're doing. So with the mask, let's uh, click that adjustment layer, come over here and you have three options. You got a square or you can make a custom one. I'm gonna make a custom one. It'll be easier to not miss anything with a custom one. As you can see, it's only affecting what's inside of that mask. That's what you want to do. You could do that. But for this, I want everything except her shirt. So I'm going to click this box inverted. There you go. But if I hit play, let's just watch it real quick. Right there, we can see that the mask, let's make sure we're selected in there again. If you click on the mask over here, you can see where the mask is. So what we have to do is create keyframes. If you're familiar with this, then you know you can fast forward, but I'm gonna hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe. We created one right there, and I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to the point where, there we go. When she starts coming outside of the mask, click the mask again to make to see where it's at, and I can just drag this up. And you notice over here, create another keyframe. And that's all it's telling the mask is that from this point of the video to this point, I want you to move X amount. So I'm gonna go back and check the center, make sure that everything here is good. She's almost getting out, so I'll just drag it in, creates another keyframe there. And just keep doing that until, to make sure that she's all the way in. And you can also maneuver each point individually. Make sure that my grass back there isn't getting cut off. And there you go. Once again, guys, take your time with this. You can see that I got a lot of the tree trunk back there. And yeah, that's how you uh, that's how you do it. If this was helpful, let me know. If you have any questions, drop a comment and uh, tag me in your stuff. I would love to see your progress and see where, what you're doing with this. If you're a dancer, I hope this is helpful. And, you know, sometimes it can get expensive to hire a videographer or an editor and this is something you can do yourself. But if you wanted me to do it for you, I, I could do that for you. Take care, guys.